Contrary to popular belief, psychic abilities aren't some woo-woo special powers that only a few people have access to. Right now, there are dormant psychic abilities within you that you haven't explored or developed yet. And that's where this video comes in. You'll learn what psychic abilities really are and the top seven psychic abilities that are most common in people. Then we're going to bust a really detrimental myth about psychic abilities. We're just gonna cut that myth right off. And then we're going to finish off with my simple four-step process to help you develop your innate psychic abilities quickly. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. This is Christina Lopes, the Heart Alchemist, here to help you open your heart, heal your past, and live with purpose. If you're new to my videos, click on that subscribe button and also on the bell so you get notified as soon as I publish new content. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram, where I share weekly tips and advice that you won't find here on YouTube. And before we get into the video, I wanted to leave a reminder that there is a free supplemental workbook that's accompanying this video. That free supplemental workbook is going to have some key takeaways and some homework questions to help you go deeper on the content that we discuss in this video today. I'll leave links to that free workbook in the description box below so you can download after watching this video. On to part one of the video, what are psychic abilities? Okay, so an easy way to look at psychic, psychic abilities or psychic powers is that a psychic power is the ability to perceive cues and information from the non-physical world. So a good way to think of this is that you can use the term sixth sense. That's used a lot for psychic abilities and it fits really well. It's that ability for you to perceive reality beyond the physical five senses. You can perceive physical reality with your five senses, but your sixth sense is that those psychic abilities that are used to perceive beyond the regular physical world. Okay, so that's what psychic abilities are. And now I'm going to get into some of the top um, uh, psychic powers or psychic abilities. There are a lot of them, so the list that I'm going to share with you here isn't exhaustive. Uh, there are a lot more, but the seven uh, uh, psychic powers that I share with you right now, these are the most common that I've found in my life in the life of so many clients that I've worked with, okay? So here are the top seven uh, psychic abilities that are most common. On to skill number one, and that's what's known as the clairs, okay? They're collectively known as the clairs. There are four of them. I'm going to talk about them in a little bit. But before I get into this, I wanted to leave a really important side note here when it has to do with psychic abilities especially when we're talking about the four clairs that I'm going to get into right now. And the side note that I want to leave here is that these psychic abilities are not to be confused with mental illness, okay? Sometimes some psychic abilities, they can sometimes be confused with mental illness and, and they, they can overlap and people get really confused whether there's a mental illness present or whether there's a psychic ability, okay? And I'll give you an example. I'll be talking about one of the clairs in a little bit, but one of them has to do with hearing voices. So some people can actually perceive voices and receive messages through voices from the non-physical realm. That is not to be confused with schizophrenia, for example, okay? So people who have the mental illness known as schizophrenia, they can very frequently hear sounds or hear voices, but those voices that are going on in their head, they're not, it's not a psychic ability, it's just their brain is malfunctioning and it's creating the perception that they're hearing voices when they're not, okay? So I want to kind of separate these two things and just leave this side note here that psychic abilities is not the same as mental illness and so that we can separate things and make sure that we're on the same page, all right? So important side note here, psychic abilities and mental illness are not the same thing and they're not to be confused. Okay, so the first of the clairs, it's what's known as clairvoyance, okay? So clairvoyance is the ability for you to see images in your mind's eye, okay? And this, this happens very frequently with people who have this innate uh, spiritual ability, this innate psychic ability, is that they can be sitting in meditation and they just close their eyes and they will start seeing images that are very significant, that are, that are coming through in the form of guidance, or they're seeing images that are showing them something about a person or a person's energy field. So this is the type of clair where you're seeing images in your mind's eye. Okay, so that's the first clair, is clairvoyance. The second one is called clairaudience, and this is where you are now perceiving voices or sounds that are coming not in this physical reality. So now remember, these clairs, these aren't things 
that you're perceiving with your regular senses. So when I say hear voices, I'm not saying hear voices with your actual physical ears, <laughs> okay? But it's called clear audience because it's coming in into the form of sound. It feels like sound. That's that's a better way uh, to talk about it, okay? So there are some mediums or psychics that they are actually really good at doing this. They'll sit there with a the client and they can actually hear messages from departed souls or from people on the other side of, of, um, of the physical reality in the spirit world, they can hear messages coming in to the physical world from the other side, okay? This is called clairaudience, the second of the clairs. The third clair is called clairsentience, and this is the ability for someone to perceive emotional content, okay? So this is uh, the ability to perceive emotional content that's coming from the outside world, especially from other people. This is a really powerful clair also, and this is very, very um, sometimes hard to hone in on because this can be very overwhelming. This could be a clair that's very overwhelming for people before they learn how to kind of use that as a power, as a psychic ability, okay? And this is very powerful in me, so when I am in front of a client, I can literally read through clairsentience. I know what that person is feeling without them even opening their mouth. I know sometimes, you know, the depth of their despair or their suffering, I could feel it without them saying anything. That's clairsentience. And in, in, in a lot of us, this takes a while for us to get used to using because sometimes the clairsentience can make us feel a bit overwhelmed with all of the emotional content that's coming in, okay? So this is clairsentience, the third of the clairs. The fourth and last clair is what's known as claircognizance. And this is where you have a direct knowing. You just know something. You, it feels like this, you know, a piece of information just falls on top of your head and you just know it. You know it sometimes without being able to mentally explain it. You just know in the core of your being that you either need to do something or you just know about something without having any, any rational understanding of how you know that, okay? Direct knowing. This is called claircognizance. Skill number two is called called channeling. I'm sure you've heard that term before. And channeling can come in a couple of different forms. Uh, probably the most common form of channeling is when you, channeling is when you're receiving information from the spirit world and you're translating it into the physical world, okay? Now, the most common form of channeling is that the person's receiving information and then they filter and interpret that information through the human lens, through their human uh, mind, okay? That's the most common. And what happens in that type of channeling is it's not as pure, and I'm using air quotes because I don't mean to say that it's not good. Uh, what I mean to say pure is that with this type of channeling it, because the information is coming through your mind, the filter of the ego comes in. And so I usually say that this type of channeling is a rough translation of the spirit messages because if the messages are coming through your brain and you're using your human self to interpret those messages, then they're not completely pure because your ego is coming online. So there's a rough translation of the messages, okay? So that's one form of channeling. Then there's another form of channeling that's considered more pure in the sense that it's a, more of a direct translation of what's coming in from spirit. And this is uh, what's known as embodiment, if you've ever heard that term. And that's when a person can literally push aside their human self. It's almost like their mind goes completely quiet and the human self disappears and in the place of the human self comes a spirit being or comes a direct uh, spiritual master that comes through and speaks through that person's body without interference from their brain, okay? This is less common because you really need to be biologically well prepared to be able to become this kind of channel where you're more purely uh, transmitting information. There are a couple of examples that I could give you of this. If you have ever heard of the term cryon or the spiritual being known as cryon channeled by Lee Carroll, okay? So um, this is, if you've ever seen Lee Carroll channeling cryon, you'll see that as soon as he starts channeling, his, Lee Carroll steps aside and cryon comes through. 
okay? Another example I have of this is uh, Abraham Hicks. If you've ever heard of the teachings of Abraham, uh, this is channeled by Esther Hicks, okay? So if you've ever noticed, uh, when Esther Hicks enters into the Abraham zone and she starts to, tra to uh, channel Abraham, the human Esther steps aside, okay? And so this is a pure form of channeling because the ego, the, the human ego is stepping aside and the spirit being is coming through uh, directly with messages. Now, I'm not saying that the human self is completely out of the picture and there can't be a little bit of distortion sometimes with this type of channeling. Sure, there can be. There always is because it's impossible to, to bring spirit messages through fully without having the human self interact in some way because we're in human form, okay? But this type of channeling is a little bit more pure than the rough translation channeling that I was just talking about, okay? So this is channeling, bringing in messages from, from the spirit world and translating them into the physical physical world. Skill number three is precognition. So this is the ability to foretell the future. And I'm using air quotes again, because sometimes I don't, I don't want this to seem like it's set in stone. And I'm going to leave a side note on this right now. But precognition is the ability to see a potential future timeline beforehand. Okay. Now the side note, the important side note that I want to leave here is that precognition is never set in stone. Contrary to what some mediums or psychics will tell you when they say they're foreseeing the future, what they're not saying is that precognition really is a probabilities game. Because what's happening is when you have the psychic ability to, to um, have this uh, precognition, what's happening is you are simply seeing how a current timeline is going to play out based on the present energy, okay? But what happens here is if the energy changes, the timeline changes, and so your precognition can be totally wrong, <laughs> okay? And so this happens a lot of times, and I, uh, when I was working one-on-one -on -one with clients, I would tell people all the time, I'm foreseeing a certain timeline, but if you switch your, uh, your actions and your behavior, and if you heal your patterns, the timeline is going to change completely, and what I'm saying to you is null and void. And I used to say this to clients all the time, okay? And so this is really important. And I'll give you an example of this. I'll give you a concrete example. So I was working with a client once who he came to me and he was a substance abuse. He, he had substance abuse issues, alcoholic, a bunch of things going on in his life. And he came to me because he was having really powerful, powerful precognition dreams of driving down the road drunk one day and he hit a, a light pole. That, that's the recurrent dream that he kept having, a violent crash against a light pole uh, while he was driving drunk. And he kept having this dream. And I could sense that it was a precognition dream that he was having. And he could sense it. That's why then he came to me. And so what we worked on in that session was I said to him, this is a warning that if you continue going down this timeline, your soul is giving you precognition of what may happen to you. But do you want to continue going down this timeline or do you want to shift? And as soon as he finished that session, he quit his alcohol, substance abuse, he got it treated. And immediately, as soon as he changed his actions, his timeline shifted and that voided the precognition that we had just had. Okay, so precognition, an important psychic ability, but a psychic ability that you always have to take with a grain of salt because it depends on the present moment energy that you're in when you do precognize. Skill number four is called energy healing. So this is when we're actually, this is, I consider this a form of channeling really because what you're doing is instead of channeling messages, you're channeling energy, okay? And I'm pointing here to the hands because energy healing is used a lot through the hands. You, do, you can use energy healing, doesn't have to be with the hands hands, but the hands are used a lot during energy healing. And that's where you're literally channeling energy and you're using that energy in a positive way to affect your body, maybe some kind of physical symptom to affect your mind, to affect your energy system and to help heal others in the planet, not just yourself. So energy healing is a really powerful psychic ability. I'm not going to talk too much more about it because I shot an entire video on energy healing and how you can develop that skill within yourself. So if you're interested in going deeper on energy healing and how to use it in your own life, I'm going to leave a link to that video in the description box below so you can watch after this one. Skill number five is known as astral projection. And this is the ability for you to project your consciousness actually out of your physical body and your consciousness travels 
and you're completely conscious of this of this kind of travel okay like you can do this consciously now astral projection happens very commonly when we're asleep so when we're asleep we project all over the place we just don't remember when we wake up but this is considered a psychic power because you can astrally project when you are conscious, not just when you're sleeping. So you can learn how to develop this skill through uh, meditation, deep meditation, and you can astrally project your consciousness literally leaves your body. Okay, so this is another uh, psychic ability that's very common. Skill number six is what's known as telepathy, and this is the ability um, for someone to perceive another person's thoughts, okay? Now, what's less talked about when it comes to telepathy is that telepathy, people who have the psychic ability of telepathy, they, they can perceive other people's thoughts, but they can also perceive thought forms from what's known as collective consciousness. If you've ever heard me talk about that, collective consciousness is literally just the agglomeration of the thought forms of the seven plus billion people that are on this planet right now. Okay, so if you remember, thought forms are energy and energy cannot be destroyed. What ends up happening is every thought that we've ever had, it sort of pools up in what's known as collective consciousness. And people who have telepathic abilities can also tap into that collective consciousness. And I've known many people who come to me and they're, they're just freaking out because their mind is racing about a thousand miles an hour. There's so many different thoughts that they know are not theirs, but they just didn't realize that they had this psychic ability of telepathy and they were plugging into collective consciousness and they were receiving all these thought forms from collective consciousness. So they were getting really restless. Okay. So this is a little quirk of telepathy. Telepathy is also a, a common, uh, uh, psychic ability. Skill number seven is what's known as automatic writing. Now, this is a form of channeling also, but the reason that I'm that I'm putting this here on its own is because automatic writing is an extremely important psychic ability that you can really hone in that could really help you in your life because it could provide you with a lot of guidance. So automatic writing is when you quiet your mind and you put your pen to or pencil to the paper and you start writing automatically without the, the, the thoughts or the sentences coming from your own brain. This is called automatic writing. You're literally channeling those messages straight from the spirit world onto a piece of paper. This is called automatic writing. And a lot of times people that have this skill, when they come back to their regular state of consciousness and they look at the paper and what they just wrote down, a lot of times they have no idea what they wrote down and it could take a while for them to decodify what's going on and what they wrote down okay automatic writing can really come in handy if you hone in this skill you can really use this skill as a way to get messages uh, from spirit and to get clarity and guidance on what to do next in your life or solve challenges in your life and just to get some assistance from spirit okay so automatic writing the last uh, of the psychic abilities that I'm going to talk about today on to part two of the video and that is the top myth about spiritual abilities okay so are you ready for this top myth so here's the top myth and and that is that only some people are special enough to have psychic powers. This is absolutely not true. So let's just cut this myth. Let's bust it once and for all. This is not true. There's no such thing as some special people that have uh, only some special people have psychic abilities. We're cutting this. Okay. So are you ready to reset this belief? Okay. So let's reset this. Every human being has the ability to develop psychic abilities and powers. There is no exception here. Now, it is true that each and every one of us has a lot of uniqueness and we're better at some psychic abilities than others. Okay, that is true. We're all unique. We're not all strong at all of the psychic abilities at the same time. Okay, we have uniqueness, but we all have the ability to develop uh, our psychic abilities. Okay, so here's an example. Um, not all of us have the ability to become elite musicians on a world stage like the famous cellist uh, Yo-Yo Ma, for example, okay? But we all have the ability to learn how to play cello at some in some way, right? Like we all have that ability. It's the same thing with your psychic abilities. You may have some of them that you're better than others, and that's what's important for you to remember. That's the pro tip for you here is that there are some psychic abilities that you are stronger at, not naturally. Those are the ones that you should develop instead of kind of chasing after the, the psychic abilities that you're not so good at and you're just trying to hone into that and develop those. You can if you want to, but I think it's a much better strategy to develop, fully develop the psychic abilities that are already innate in you. Okay, so I'll give you an example for me. 
I'm not very good at astral projection. I'm not very good at clairaudience either. So I knew that right away and I started to understand where my fortes were and my, my strengths are in claircognizance for sure and direct channeling for sure, okay? And so what did I do? I noticed that those were my strong points and I started to go into those and develop those then to just sit around for hours every day trying to astrally project. I just thought that that was a waste of time. So I honed in on the skills that I was already innately sensitive at and I developed those further, okay? So for you, you can do the same thing and you will notice that there are some psychic abilities that already come naturally to you even if you don't know that yet, once you find those, then hone in on those and develop those further, okay? But the myth has been busted. Everyone can develop psychic abilities. And after watching this video, you're gonna know how to develop yours. On to part three of the video, how to develop psychic abilities. So now that you know so much more about psychic powers, the top myth about it, the top psychic powers that are available out there, now let's hone in and really help you start developing your own innate um, psychic abilities. I'm going to share with you a very simple four-step process. Follow this process step-by-step, step, one at a time. This is going to help you really start honing in on those psychic abilities and developing them. Step number one is a must, essential, fundamental. <laughs> I can't stress this enough. And step number one is to quiet the mind. Okay, so quieting the mind is of utmost important when you are developing your, your uh, spiritual or psychic abilities because what quieting the mind does, the, the monkey mind, the ego that's constantly talking and talking and talking and talking and the thoughts that are moving around in your mind, those are probably your biggest obstacle to the development of psychic abilities. The more, the louder your mind is, the less you'll be able to pick up on the subtle cues. Your sixth sense relies on subtlety. The spirit world is very, very subtle. So you need to be able to be sensitized to that subtlety of the spirit world. And as long as this mind of yours is going a thousand miles an hour, it's gonna be really difficult for you to develop those spiritual abilities fully. Now here's a practical example so you can really see firsthand how, how this works and how the subtlety of the spirit world works, okay? I love to use this example. So do this imagination exercise with me. Imagine that you are, at a concert, if you've ever been to a concert, there are thousands and thousands of people just jumping up and down and dancing. And let's say it's your favorite band that's up on stage. And there's these enormous speakers and the music is blasting loud. And you're just in the middle of this concert dancing away. And let's say I come to you in the middle of that crowd, in the middle of those loudspeakers and that enormous sound. And I come to you and I just tap you on the shoulder and I whisper something in your ear at that time. <laughs> Will you be able to hear what I'm saying? <laughs> no, right? Like there is no way that I could whisper something in your ear in the middle of a concert and you're going to be able to hear it. You're, you're probably going to scream, what? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Why? Because you are inundated with so much stimuli that you cannot pick up on the subtlety of a whisper. And it's exactly the same thing. That image of being in a concert and the sound blasting, that's what happens in your own skull when your mind doesn't shut up. <laughs> Okay. The louder your mind is, the less you will be able to perceive the subtlety of the spirit world. And the world, the word subtlety is so important here. Spirit is very subtle in the way that it um, sends energy. And so for you to tap into the subtle world of energy, you have to have that mind quiet and calm and, and kind of in silence. And that's how you tap into those six senses a lot, a lot more quickly. Okay. Now I'm not going to get into too much detail into how to do this because there are many ways to quiet your mind from meditation. You can do meditation on a daily basis. That's my top one. I always recommend that to have a meditation practice or contemplation, or even just putting some hiking shoes on and going out in the wilderness and being in nature. Find what works for you that calms your mind down and decreases the frequency of thoughts going on in your mind. The more that you do that, the more that you train your mind to shut up for a little bit, the easier it's going to be for you to develop these psychic abilities. Step number two is connecting with your body. Okay, so psychic abilities are perceived 
in your physical body. They are perceived and interpreted in your physical body. So even though the sixth sense is beyond the traditional five senses, that sixth sense is translated still in the body. That's all you have. You have this physical body. You're in human form. And even when you're translating information from the spirit world, you're still translating through the prism of your beautiful physical body. The more that you connect to your physical body, but again, this is step number two. So you've already started to quiet the mind down and then you dip down into the body and you start connecting with your body. The more that you do this, you're going to start developing your psychic abilities because as you're connecting to your body, you're going to perceive the subtle sensations going on in the body, how it feels, and also how your body responds to the reception of spirit messages. Okay. And you can find this out by connecting to your body, quieting your mind, and then connecting to your body. Now, you can easily reinforce this connection by sitting quietly in meditation. I love doing that also, just sitting quietly in meditation and, and just tapping into how you're feeling, how your body's feeling, what are the bodily sensations you're having. So you could do it that way through quiet contemplation or meditation. But this isn't the only way that you can connect to your body. You can connect to your body using many other ways. I love to use dancing. I love to use drumming. Drumming is really important. The more, re the more percussion you use, the more you can connect connect with the rhythms of your body. Um, you can just go out in the, out in the outdoors. You can do exercise when you exercise, when you, when you kind of push your body into that increase, that heart rate and your respiratory rate, you're automatically connecting with that more physical part of you. Okay. So there's lots of ways for you to connect to your body, whether you're using meditation or whether you're using dancing or drumming or any of these other ways. The point is, as soon as you quiet your mind, learn to connect with your body and communicate with it. Ask it how it's feeling. Notice the subtleties and the cues that your body sends you. The more that you learn how to connect with your body, the more easily those psychic abilities will come to you. Step number three is to focus on your senses. Now, this may not seem like it makes a lot of sense initially because I'm talking about the six senses. So why am I telling you to connect with your five senses? The reason is because they're connected even though they don't seem like they are. When you hone in on your five traditional senses, except one of them, I'm going to get into that in a little bit, but when you hone in to your traditional senses and you start to focus on them, what you're going to notice is you amplify your senses. The more that you amplify the traditional senses, the easier it's going to be for you to connect to your sixth sense. Okay. And so what I mean by this is, and you've probably noticed this, if you're a meditator, uh, people who are regular meditators are probably uh, going to, going to resonate with with what I'm going to say now. And that is that when you sit in meditation and you start to practice meditation on a daily basis, and you, especially if you're in silence, not if you're, not if you're having like meditation earphones on or anything like that, just sitting in silence with no equipment, with no music, nothing. You're just sitting in silence. And what you do is you'll start to notice sounds. Maybe if you're meditating in your kitchen, you can hear your refrigerator, or maybe you're meditating outside, you could hear the birds chirping. You can smell the flowers of the, or the wind if you're meditating outside. You can feel or touch the surface where you're meditating on. These are all great tricks to, to focus in on your traditional senses. When you do that, they will start to amplify. So you'll notice that if you sit in meditation for long enough, you sit in silent meditation, you will start to notice that your hearing gets amplified and you can actually hear sounds, subtle sounds that you weren't hearing before. And it's because you're sensitizing your, your senses. Now, here's a pro tip that I wanted to leave. I said this a little while ago, five senses except one. And so here's the pro tip. You're going to exclude vision from this. <laughs> okay. And I'll give you a reason why. So your eyes, your physical eyes, they correspond to about 80 to 85% of the sensory input that we perceive on a daily basis is coming in through the eyes. So your eyes predominate your senses, your five senses, the eyes are the most powerful. So when you, if you're trying to focus on the eyes, what you're going to do is you're going to end up messing with the third eye, the development of the third eye and your third eye is extremely important in psychic abilities. So the pro tip here is you're going to focus and hone in on your five senses, not really on the five. You're just going to hone in on four traditional senses and you're going to shut down your vision. So you basically all this to say, close your eyes whenever you're doing this, this psychic uh, development eyes shut 
As soon as you do that, you cut off the main sensory uh, organ that you have, which are your eyes. You shut them off right away. As soon as you shut them off, you're immediately starting to connect and amplify the other four senses. And then as soon as you do that, you go into the sixth sense. All right. So there's your pro tip. Eyes closed. Shut off your vision. Focus on your traditional senses, on smell, on on listen, uh, just hearing sounds, touch. Okay, focus on those and you'll see that those uh, that those really are the gateway to get you connected with your six senses. Step number four and the last step here in the process is just to simply intend to develop. Okay, and what this means is you're going to set out the intention that you are ready to develop your psychic abilities and you're ready to open up into them. Okay, and you can do this the more that you open up your energy, the more your psychic abilities will develop and the more you're also calling in the help of your soul and your spirit guides to help in this development, right? I love to use mantras or affirmations, and I'm going to leave you with a powerful mantra that you could repeat to kind of open up your energy uh, to the development of your psychic abilities, okay? So here's the mantra, very simple mantra, and the mantra is, I'm ready and willing to develop my psychic abilities. So then you literally repeat this simple mantra. You can develop your own mantra, but you're going to repeat it to reinforce the opening of that, um, of that channel, the opening of your energy system so that you're more open to develop those psychic abilities, hone in and tap into them. All right. Now I want to leave you with the pro tip here. This is a really important pro tip when you're opening up to your psychic abilities, opening up to the development of your psychic abilities. Here's your pro tip. And that is to release fear, okay? Because this is really common, especially if you have any type of religious programming, if you were raised religious, or if you have any type of religious programming or any belief in you uh, that, that you may have been instilled with, uh, the belief that if I open up to my psychic powers, that psychic powers are evil, they're demonic. There's a bunch of different beliefs, especially from re- coming from religion, that keep us away from our psychic powers. And the reason that religions have kept us away from our psychic powers is because religion it was a form of control. Uh, religion didn't want you in your power, didn't want you connecting to spirit on your own, because then why would you need a religion if you can connect directly to spirit? You wouldn't need an intermediary. And so there's a lot of this religious templating that keeps us away from our psychic powers by uh, calling them demonic or evil or all of that, okay? So you're going to release any fear. There is nothing to be afraid of. You have nothing to fear when it comes to the development of your innate innate psychic powers. So release the fear. The emotion fear is very, very dense. The more that you're in fear, the more it blocks the development of your sixth senses. Okay, so... So just release fear, let it go, breathe deep. If you feel any kind of fear, you're just going to keep releasing it and opening up to the development of your psychic abilities. Now, to help you release fear a little bit more, um, it's important to come into self-confidence and a lot of sovereignty and power, okay? The more you are in self-confidence and sovereignty, the less fear you have about developing your psychic abilities, okay? So I am shot a whole video on self-confidence, how to develop it, how to tap into it. I'll leave links to that video in the description box below if you want to develop your self-confidence kind of as a preparation to develop your psychic abilities. Okay, now I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below, what's your most powerful psychic ability? Do you know what it is? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to download the free supplemental workbook that accompanies this video. You can find that link in the description box below. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel or head over to my website where you can download my popular free guided meditations. And don't forget these videos that I recommend and in this one, those would be great for you to continue viewing. All right, beautiful soul, I love you. I'm out.